Well, hello and welcome YouTube, Mr. Robinson back here with yet another brand new exciting video, all math based of course, and as always, it is an honor and a privilege to be serving you here today, as it is every day here in my virtual classroom. Step on inside, and you know what, if you keep getting public, if you're subscribed to me, and if you keep getting videos from me, notifications, I mean, I do multiple series at a time, because I'm doing one for one class type, and one for another. So when I say we're continuing a series, I want you to know where that series is coming off of. Because you, the last video, the more, most recent video you're going to see other than this one, is one on graphing, graphing rational functions. That's completely unrelated to what I'm doing right now on quadratic word problems. So I'm continuing the series on what we've been doing with quadratic equations, whether before we were factoring them and solving them. And we're going to do a little bit of that right here, actually, as we came off graphing quadratic functions. So now that you've learned graphing quadratic functions, I think it's worth talking about word problems in the sense of maybe not necessarily graphing them, but how the graph makes sense of what it is that we're looking for on something, how the graph connects to our answer, but we're really solving these for the most part algebraically given what we've learned out of graphing functions themselves. So I have some word problems to deal with, and here's the thing, I'm gonna spend a long time on using different methods for each thing here, if you feel comfortable with that, because you can do it this way, or that way, or here's another thing you can do. So buckle up, find the method that you most prefer with the kind of word problem that we're gonna see right here. I, As always, I wanna try and put a PDF down below, but since this thing uploads overnight, I don't always go back to it. If you wanna leave a comment for me and let me know to put one down there for what I'm gonna do, I surely will. Especially since they're word problems, right? I don't want you to write out the word problems and stuff like that. So I'm gonna dive straight into it, guys, and have a calculator handy just in case there's something you need to do uh, with calculating things as well. I think I'm gonna stop short on calculating as much as I don't have to. But if I need to, I will. All right, guys, quadratic word problems. So here's the idea. We're going to do some word problems here where we run into trying to find a value of x. Now, keep in mind, they're going to be using t a lot instead of x. But find you know find the value of x when we set a certain y value somewhere, especially 0. That's going to happen a lot. And we're going to find a maximum points here with graphs because what we're going to do is we're going to have a lot of upside down parabolas as a result of problems that have to do with gravity and gravity takes form in this sort of way where you're going to see this model thing a lot this negative 16 t squared negative 16 has to do with in some way the acceleration of gravity on earth when it comes to measuring with feet and seconds so if you see this if this is if this isn't the first time you see negative 16 it's not a mistake it's something you're going to see in math problems, physics problems, and things like that when you're talking about feet and seconds with the acceleration of gravity on Earth. These other two values have something to do with our values. I'll talk about when we actually use them and get to them, but I'm just letting you know that's what we're going to have. And a negative for the t squared means it's going to be an upside down graph. So we're going to be dealing with upside down parabolas where we're going to be starting somewhere and we're going to possibly be hitting a maximum and a maximum is where we talk about the vertex so we're going to be doing a lot of that there i'll start with number one and we'll see where that kind of thing occurs and let's go into it jason jumped off a cliff into the ocean in acapulco while vacationing with some friends his height as a function of time could be modeled by the function h of t you know which is like y if you want me to get one rewrite this time I'm going to do this. I'm not going to do this here on out. Just if you ever hear me say y instead of h of t, this is what I mean. And negative 16t squared plus 16t plus 480. So once again, guys, interchangeably, I'm going to be saying y instead of h of t and x instead of t back and forth. Just hopefully you know, because we always talk about x and y or x and f of x or whatever else. So uh, where t is the time in seconds and h is the height in feet. So basically what's happening is we have a model for Jason's arc from jumping. One more thing I want to mention here. Because t is our x in essence right here, don't think of any gravity thing as I'm going this way like I'm going to the right. It's not necessarily that. Jason could be jumping straight up and straight down or from the cliff. He's jumping and then he's going off into the water like that, just straight up and down. He doesn't have to be doing a parabolic jump this way. That, that doesn't what this means. Uh, that's not what this means. This just means time is going onward. And then we're measuring heights at certain times. So that's just another thing to remember there. Okay. T is time. It's in seconds. H is height. It's in feet. All right. Here we go. How long did it take for Jason to reach his maximum height? And this other question after is, what was the highest point that Jason reached? These questions really do go in tandem with each other. These questions are asking about a maximum and how long and what was. These are asking about the vertex. 
This is asking about the x portion of the vertex. This is asking about the y portion of the vertex, or of course, the t portion of the vertex and the h of t portion of the vertex right here. That's what they're doing here. They're asking you again in this parabola, if Jason's jumping and you got a parabolic arc, what is the highest point and when did it occur? When is the t, what is the h? Okay, so that's what we're trying to do, find the vertex values. Now, one way we could do the vertex value thing, and we could literally just do one at a time here, and probably what we'd want to do is use negative b over 2a. And what I mean by that is the x value of the vertex, or in this case t, is with negative b, negative 16 over 2a over 2 times negative 16. And that is negative 16 over negative 32, which reduces to 1 half. Now I'm fine using decimals for these problems because it's going to be all contextually based, right? I'm not going to leave improper fractions. If I got nine halves, I'm not going to say, oh, Jason reached his height nine halves of a second. I'd actually give you a decimal. We do exact numbers, rounding, whatever else. But we're also going to use units here. This is 0.5 seconds. 0.5 seconds into Jason's jump, he reaches his maximum height. That makes sense. We're not in the air for very long before we hit a maximum height. Half a second seems to work. Four and a half seconds later would be a pretty impressive jump. Um, remember, he might be in the air that long because he's going off a cliff into the water, but his maximum height is from somewhere. He jumps, reaches maximum height, and then goes down for a while, right? But half a second into his jump, he reached his maximum height. Now, what is the maximum height? You take your x value, or t, I should say, and substitute it into your equation to then find the y value, or h of t, for that. So now I'm going to do h of 0 0.5. Let's substitute t into here. We'll get negative 16 times 0.5 squared plus 16 times 0.5 plus 480. Now before all y'all whip your calculators out here, 0.5 was also 1 half. Uh, those are pretty good to do with a fraction without a calculator. One half squared is one fourth. Negative 16 times one fourth is negative 16 divided by four. That's negative four. 16 times one half is eight, 16 divided by two, and plus 480. Negative four plus eight is four. Four plus 480 is 484. So Jason reaches a maximum height of 484 feet. That's not to say that he jumped from ground level, like zero feet to 484 feet in the air. No, he was actually a certain distance off the ground before that. And what was that distance off the ground? Before we talk about everything on part C, guys, let's kind of refer to what this graph could potentially look like. Not that we need to graph this, but I think graphing can really explain away and make sense of what the heck it is we're doing. Where did Jason jump off of? How tall is this cliff? And by the way, this, the, the T, you know, the x-axis right here, it really is representing sea level he going to the ocean guys this is the ocean right here okay the cliff pretend like this is a vertical portion it doesn't matter pretend like this is a vertical portion of the cliff right there 480 is our y-intercept if you guys know standard form you know our y-intercept is at zero comma c so our y-intercept is at zero comma 480 that means that this graph hits 480 up here this is an upside down parabola and we do happen to know that one point on this parabola is the vertex right here at 0 0.5 comma 484. So half a second into his jump, he is 484 feet in the air, and this is an upside down parabola. So we know he hit this point and this point. You know what this graph is doing? It's doing a whole bunch of this. It's that, and it's that, and it's a, that's the worst looking parabola I've ever seen. It's that, and it's that. Now this is still the worst looking parabola, but regardless, okay, it's doing something like that, right? It's doing something like that. And let's see what I'm gonna say. Oh, and where where was he on the cliff? He started 480 feet in the air. That means that he jumped up only four feet. I say only four feet. I don't know who can jump four feet in the air. But he jumped four feet in the air. Jason is an Olympian right here. And he's doing a great Olympic dive. And guys, let's make no two bones about it here. You you jump 480 feet into water. It's not likely you'll also survive that fall. Um, so all that being said, he will hit the water at some time. And that's where we're going to answer part C. Jason hit the water after how many seconds? We want to find out what this T value is right now there we're uncertain now i want to let you know a heads up here as well and this is why looking at the graph is important with our answer 
Jason jumps right here. So any time before that really is irrelevant. This is not really a portion of the graph that we want to talk about. This is a restriction in our domain. We, we really only want to look at values from t equals zero onward up until this point. And look, once Jason hits the water, the model for gravity and stuff doesn't really apply anymore either. Our model really only applies to this part right here. It really only applies from the time he jumps to the time he hits water. That being said, guys, if we solve for t algebraically, we would find two solutions. We'd find a solution here, and we'd find a solution here, a positive solution and a negative solution. The negative solution is irrelevant to the answer. The positive solution is the only one that matters as far as time. At time zero, he jumps. At time something positive, he hits water. What is that time? We're talking about hitting the water as a height. Our height is measured right here as a function of time, we want to set our height h of t equal to zero in order to solve for that time. So we're going to figure out in our equation here, negative 16t squared plus 16t plus 480, we're going to set that whole thing equal to zero because that's the height we're trying to find. And let's solve for t. Now, as any algebraic problem would be, I would ask you to seek a greatest common factor. In this case, negative 16 is actually the greatest common factor of this whole thing. And you get t squared minus t minus 30 equals 0. If you divide by negative 16 all the way, you get t squared minus t minus 30 equals 0. So let's solve for t. Now keep in mind, this would be a different graph right here, but it has the same x-intercepts, t-intercepts. Uh, let's fact. This one's factorable right here. Two numbers multiply and make negative 30 and add to make negative 1 are negative 6 and positive 5. You get t minus 6 times t plus 5 equals 0. And the zero product property states if one thing times the other equals 0, either t minus 6 equals 0, so t equals 6, or t plus 5 equals 0, so t equals negative 5. That means that on this graph, guys, these values, which are clearly not drawn to scale, this graph here would say that this is the negative 5 value right there, and this is the 6 right there. Negative 5 will be disqualified here. Negative 5 means 5 seconds before the jump. This model didn't, it's not like Jason was ascending up to the cliff right here. Jason was probably standing on the cliff before he ran and jumped, did whatever. But the point is t equals negative 5 is, it's not extraneous, it's just not a part of our domain. It's a restricted part, it's not what we're trying to answer. 6 is though, 6 seconds after Jason jumps he hits the water. He probably unfortunately meets his end as well. But he, uh, 6 seconds right there, hits water, unless he's is diving, he figured something out <laughs> with regard to the diving. Six seconds in, boom, at six seconds, he hits water from his jump. So half a second into his jump, he reaches maximum height, five and a half seconds after that. Six seconds after his jump, he hits water, and that answers the questions. Now, the only other thing I wanted to do, and I, I probably should have done it first, I just got into the talk about the parabola, is there's another way we could have found the vertex values, and it's something that I've been preaching before, which is completing the square. Now, is completing the square a more efficient method? I don't know, because what it does is it gets you into vertex form, and you answer A and B immediately from vertex form. But this one breaks it down to negative B over 2A for A, and then plug in that negative B over 2A to get B. And this completing the square is unfortunate with the fraction thing. This one, it didn't really get in the way. Um, this way, it might. So over here, guys, the maximum height stuff, I'm going to go and do completing the square. This is going to be, like I said, this is going to be very busy when we do all this work here. So mind the busyness. You can move on to number two if you fast forward and find it. I'm going to do completing the square with this right here. Let's see if those who want to stick around can follow along. So with this equation here, guys, 480, um, <clears throat> I'm going to move 480 off to the side a little bit. I'm going to say, and in fact, I don't really know if I have enough room here like that. There we go. I'm going to move 480 off to the side as I factor negative 16 out from the first two terms. Remember, we need a t squared, a positive 1t squared here, and there's a minus t. And I'm going to add something right here to complete the square. Now, if the 480 is still a part of the equation, but whatever I add here, I have to subtract here. Remember, this needs to multiply by negative 16, whatever I subtract. Okay, this gets a little confusing for people here. Negative, this is a negative 1 here. Negative 1 divided by 2 is negative 1 half. Negative 1 half squared is positive 1 fourth. So this is a 1 fourth right here, and this is a 1 fourth right there. So whatever I add in here, I subtract right there, okay? Now this thing factors down. The negative 16 is still on the outside. Inside this factors down into t minus 1 half quantity squared like that. 
as I complete the square there. That was a perfect square trinomial. And then negative 16 times 1 fourth is negative 4. So I'm going to do 480 minus negative 4 or 480 plus 4, which is 484. So this is vertex form right there. And vertex form reveals your vertex, which is at 1 half comma 484. So the 1 half is the time for Jason. The 1 half is the time for Jason, that 0 0.5. That's how many seconds it took. And the 484 was the how high he got from it. So you can use vertex form. I mean, you can turn it into vertex form. You can complete the square and get those values that way as well. I can see why that might be the unpopular opinion there. I don't know if I'm going to use vertex form each time if it's going to give me the fraction version. If it doesn't, I'll happily do it for you. Uh, but that negative 16, guys, you're going to factor out that negative 16 each time. Every problem here is probably going to have the negative 16 because all these have to do with gravity. Okay, number two. Let's go. If a toy rocket is launched vertically upward from ground level with an initial velocity of 128 feet per second, then its height h after t seconds is given by the equation, not the equations, just the equation. h of t equals negative 16 t squared plus 128 t if air resistance is neglected. Just air resistance is, ne is neglected. It's not going to float down. It's going to fall as fast as a human would. All right. Um, so here we go. Um, h of t equals negative 16t squared plus 128t. You can notice here there is no plus anything else after that. Let me rewrite this equation, though, with a constant of plus 0. Uh, the reason I write that is so that you can reference and make sense of what the heck we have. this has to do with when we talk about it, the graph for this thing. Notice they mention that this is from ground level. This is from ground level because this launched from the ground. That plus 0 means when it comes to y-intercept, guys, we're at the origin. This graph that goes upside down, mind you, starts at the origin right here. It shoots up, gravity takes form, it hits a maximum, it goes back and hits the ground again. And of course, we restrict the domain to just this. We're not going to do anything down here or down here as the parabola would continue. And here's a maximum height we're probably going to talk about at some point. But there's a y-intercept right here at 0, which is also an x-intercept, uh, at the origin. And then there's another x-intercept we're going to talk about right there. And, you know, we got to go ahead and understand that that's what that zero is talking about, the ground level. That's that point right there. So the model takes care of that for us. Now, notice this one as well. This, this is the other part of this. Initial velocity of 128 feet. That is the linear coefficient right there. So the linear coefficient is going to be the initial velocity. The y-intercept is going to be the initial height. And the Quadratic coefficient is the acceleration of gravity on Earth with feet in feet per squared second. Or it, it has to do with the acceleration of gravity. Uh, gravity, um, the, the force of gravity on Earth is negative 32 feet per squared second, and this, this accounts for that. This negative 16 accounts for that. All right, guys, how long will it take for the rocket to return to the ground? Returning to the ground is, of course, this is ground level right here at h of t equals 0. We are going to go ahead and substitute 0 for h of t in this equation here. We have negative 16t squared plus 128t. By the way, guys, I'm kind of losing my voice a little bit right here. It's going to be a lot of explanation. I'm just letting you know. I'm going to take a sip of water right now. In case I got a sip of water, in case it feels like I'm losing it. I already taught all day today and already did an hour-long video on graphing rational functions. So kind of losing it a little bit here. My bad. Anyway. So let's go ahead and solve for t. Uh, I'd gladly factor out, once again, a negative 16. And here a t. There's a common factor of t that can factor out of just these two terms here, the quadratic and the linear term. And inside, we're left with t minus, I think that's 8. t minus 8 equals 0. We can solve this one by factoring. We just factored. This is now a product of this times this. And let's use zero product property. If this times this equals 0, either this equals 0, so divide by 16, c equals 0, or t minus 8 equals 0, so t equals 8. Now, there are two different solutions when it comes to t, but when it comes to answering the question, return to the ground, we only care about t equals 8. Not that t equals 0 is a problem with our domain, but this is where it took off. The rocket launched at t equals 0. And again, that's where the graph can kind of help us understand that idea. T equals 0 is not one of the answers there, but T equals 8, oh, seconds, is the answer. So that must mean, obviously, this is 0, but that must mean that this here is 8. That x-intercept or t-intercept is 0, and that t-intercept is 8, and we are squared away. All right, 
That looks good there. That solves that one. Part B. After how many seconds will the rocket be 112 feet above the ground? Now this is playing under a nice assumption that the rocket does actually hit 112 feet. We're going to see some other problems where it doesn't actually hit the mark that it talks about and it actually straight up asks, will it reach whatever height? So, you know, I don't know where 112 is specifically. We don't know what this maximum height is, but just get the idea, guys, that maybe, just maybe, this could be our 112 right here. And again, the graph really helps us understand this. We're going to hit 112 at two different places. We're going to hit 112 when the rocket goes up and when the rocket goes down. So when we're talking about finding what times those are, we're going to get two different answers there, right here and right here. So getting two different answers is acceptable in this case, assuming that it didn't just hit at its peak and assuming that it hits it at all. I'll let you know that it does. So what we're going to do is now, this is where we're going to set our height to 112. So we're going to take our model, negative 16t squared, plus 128t and set it equal to 112 and say, okay, what value of t gets us this height? So let's solve for t doing this the same way that we would any other quadratic equation. Let's set it equal to zero by subtracting 112 over. Nothing, nothing, is, um, nothing good comes from having a negative quadratic coefficient. So I'm going to factor out the negative, but even more so guys, all these divide by negative 16. Let's just let's save ourselves some time here with the quadratic. I'm not going to factor a t out because this doesn't have a t in it. But I'm going to divide everything here by negative 16 as the, you know, just trust me, take my word for it, the 112 can divide by 16. They're nice for you on this problem. And we're going to get t squared minus 8t plus 7. So again, everything good comes from factoring out the negative and any greatest common factors. I now have a 1t squared. This is a quadratic trinomial where we ask what two numbers multiply to make 7 and add to make negative 8. That is negative 7 and positive 1. So if t minus 7 times t minus 1 equals 0, zero product property tells us that that would mean t equals 1 and t equals 7, right? So those are the answers there, seconds and seconds. And you know what? Both of those totally work. They are within our domain of when the rocket took off at zero seconds and when it landed at eight seconds. It hits one right here at 112 feet when it goes up and it hits seven seconds here at 112, it hits 112, 112 feet at seven seconds when it returns down. Both answers are good. They didn't say on its way up or on its way down. It's just 112 feet, two answers for the thing. And again, that's where the idea of the graph helps us there. That's, that's us playing with our knowledge and understanding that. Okay, now part C asks how long will it take the rocket to hit its maximum height and part D asks what is its maximum height? And of course, those are once again asking about vertex, excuse me, vertex. So this is the X value of the vertex for how long and the what is maximum height is the Y, ask for the Y or the T and the H of T, of course. Now we can use negative B over 2A as we did before. We can use completing the square and get vertex form. I'm going to do both of those with you and for you. A third one we can do, at least to just get the x or the t value right here, is remember what we talked about when we've done factored form before. Uh, when we did factored form to find intercepts, we always knew that the vertex existed halfway between our x-intercepts since they were the same height. So you know what the x value or the t value of this vertex is right here? halfway between 0 and 8. That's 4. I can already tell you right now that this answer is going to be t equals 4 without calculating a single thing just because knowledge of my intercepts and the graph. So the graph can help you get that if you so choose to. The previous one technically could have done the same thing but we did intercept second. You notice this negative 5 and that 6. You know what's halfway between negative 5 and 6? 1 half. One half, that's halfway between negative five and six. So if you found intercepts first, you can go halfway in between and find it. Now, what are two other ways to find the x value or the t value? You can use negative b over 2a. What's negative b? That's negative, you have to use the original model, 128. Negative 128 over 2a is two times negative 16, get used to that. Two times negative 16, that's negative 128 over negative 32, which is four. So once again, you get four seconds as you just saw from the previous thing that confirms we got four seconds here now i will solve for y and then after that i'm going to do completing the square on this so you can again see how that works out and i have a lot more room this time 
So what's the maximum height here? Let's substitute 4, whether you got it from here or here. Let's substitute 4 into the function h of t equals negative 16t squared plus 128t. So h of 4 equals negative 16 times 4 squared plus 128 times 4. And that's going to be 4 squared is 16 times negative 16 is negative 256. 128 times 4, 128 times 2, 256 is 512. And that answer is going to be 256 feet, like that. So that is the maximum height. That means the vertex occurs at 4, 250. Whoops. 4, 256, like so. So what is this? The rocket takes off ground level. The rocket takes off at ground level at time zero. Four seconds later, it reaches its maximum height of 256 feet. Oh, uh, on its way up, a second in on its way up, it hits 112 feet. It kind of slows its descent, and four seconds in, it hits 256 feet, and it goes back down. Seven seconds in, it hits 112 again, hits the ground eight seconds later. And that is what we do there. Now, one more time, guys, I'm going to do completing the square here to give you vertex form of this thing so you can practice that in case you ever want to use it, in case it's something you have to use, converting to vertex form. And of course, guys, we could write out vertex form given the x and the, uh, excuse me, given the h and the k that we have right here. And of course, the a value being negative 16. Let's take our h of t equation, negative 16 t squared plus. 128t. There is no constant to talk about there, but we still have to factor out the negative 16 from the first two terms to get a t squared. We'll get t squared minus 8t, and let's add something there. Whatever we add here, we got to subtract here. Remember that it's got to multiply by negative 16 because the negative 16 out there. Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16, and the 16 also goes right there. So this thing factors down into t minus 4 quantity squared negative the opposite of negative 16 is 16 16 times 16 is 256 so there's the vertex form and that once again confirms that your h is 4 and your k is blocked from me your k is 256 right there so you could also use vertex form like i did there and like i said i will keep doing complete the square as long as i have an even number. I don't want to deal with fractions there. At that point, we might as well just use negative b over 2i. All right, let's keep going and flip the page there. Number three. Another toy rocket. Oh, it's just a rocket this time. I don't know if it's a toy rocket. A rocket is launched from atop a 101-foot cliff with an initial velocity of 116 feet per second. They say substitute the values into the vertical motion formula. Now, keep in mind here, the vertical motion formula includes what I mentioned before. The force of gravity is going to be applied since we're on Earth. V of VT, V is the initial velocity. This is the 116 that's going to go right there. And the 101 foot cliff is the initial height here. That's what you call H sub zero or H naught. They call it H naught right there. Ignore the let H of T equals zero. That has to do with part B. Just ignore that right there. Okay. So uh, the model here, substitute the values into the vertical motion formula. Our formula should look like this, negative 16t squared plus 116t plus 101. So that is the actual model. If they ever ask you to plug things in, you know, based on that, we have initial velocity for the linear term, initial height for the constant term, and of course, force of gravity for the quadratic term. All right, how long will the rocket take to hit the ground after it's launched? That's what has to do with part B, let h of t equals zero. Now you don't have to ignore it so much. I just want to go ahead and say that has to do with this problem down here. Round to the nearest tenth of a second. Okay, it's interesting that they say round to the nearest tenth of a second. They didn't say that before. It sounds like this might be an irrational solution, which means it might sound like this is not factorable. I'd believe it. 101 being a prime number, I don't think I'm going to get the things that I want out of this thing. Um there so let's go ahead and substitute zero for h of t we have negative 16 t squared plus 116 t plus 101 equals zero and you know what there's no common factor here either now i do want to divide everything by negative one i don't like my a value being negative i'm going to turn it positive by turning everything else negative or by by changing every other sign which turns these negative here 
and again set equal to zero divide by negative one so i'm rewriting the equation there dividing everything by negative one multiplying everything by negative one whatever so as far as this goes here guys even 116 doesn't factor out of the 16 so i'm not going to solve by completing the square either not factorable completing the square seems like a moot point here this is a quadratic formula problem and this is what quadratic formula is built for guys the, these I the numbers are gonna be big but you deal with big okay we deal with big so here we go the a value the a value is 16 as I put it the a value is 16 B is negative 116 and C is negative 101 I'm gonna start with the discriminant first discriminant is going to be B squared minus 4 AC that'll be negative 116 squared minus 4 times 16 times negative 100 and one pretty big numbers here right so uh, let's take out the calculator for this part here I got a calculator right here and I'm gonna go ahead and do give me a second let me find my program there it is let's do B squared I forgot how chuggalicious this was I haven't used this in a long time minus 4 a C this is the the safe way I was gonna say the smart way this is the safe way to go ahead and do this just plug it in right there parentheses and all without making any mistakes on the calculations we get a discriminant of 19,920 one nine nine two zero so we get 19,920 is the discriminant that's the thing that will go inside the square root there so now let's do the rest of the quadratic formula x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of 19920 all divided by 2 right that's the b squared minus 4c all divided by 2 a so t equals 116 plus or minus the square root of 19920 over 32 now as with the other graphs as with the other graphs guys and i'm just gonna draw it here for a second this is something that starts at 101 feet it goes up goes down we hit a point there that also means there's another point over here that's another t intercept there are two answers to this and the negative answer that we get will not apply only the positive answer how do you imagine we will get a negative answer from this if we do the subtraction version of it we're not going to do the subtraction version of this one that'll give us a negative answer that we don't care about that's not a time that we care about I'm only going to do plus and this is once again one of the reasons why you want your a value to be positive Otherwise, you'd have a negative here, a negative here, and you'd have to know that you're going to have to do the minus there. And we don't want to do the minus. Another reason you want that A value to be positive. When I say trust me, I mean trust me. You do not want that A value to be negative when you're doing that. All right, let's go ahead and compute that. Use the calculator again. So let's go to graphing calculator, or scientific calculator, I should say. And let's do 116. I'm going to do this all in one thing here. 116 in parentheses plus the square root of 1900 or 19920 close those parentheses up all divided by 2a all divided by 32 and this is going to be 8.0355 so that's rounded to the nearest what they say 10th that's 8.0 uh, 8.03 uh, 8.04 would be the nearest hundredth but the nearest tenth is 8.0 seconds here so let's go back to this so 8.0 seconds now that's kind of interesting because didn't our other rocket hit eight seconds the other one's exactly eight seconds but pretend like they're the same didn't our other rocket hit eight seconds later why is this rocket that started off higher up take the same amount of time to hit the ground why didn't it take longer at the ground because it launched with a slower velocity this one launched at 116 feet per second the other one launched at 128 feet per second. You know that if something launches higher or faster, it'll stay up in the air longer in a way, right? So even though this thing was higher up, much higher up, 101 feet up, that 116 uh, compared to 128 uh, initial velocity, 12, 12 feet per second makes a difference, man. It does, uh, at least the percentage-wise. All right, there's that answer then. Okay, here we go. Number four. You and a friend are hiking in the mountains. You want to climb to a ledge that is 20 feet above you. The height of the grappling hook you throw is given by this function here. What is the maximum height of the grappling hook? Can you throw it high enough to reach the ledge? 
Okay, guys. Um, people have trouble visualizing this one a little bit. I don't know if my drawing is going to help either. I, I, if I could stand with you and I, and I say picture this, this, it might help. But let's pretend that you're standing right here. Okay, here's ground level. Let's pretend that you're standing right here. Let's ignore the friend for now. And there is a ledge. You want to climb to a ledge that's 20 feet above you. So let's pretend there's the ledge that's right here. And you're going to toss a grappling hook like and and it might fall down right if you miss it it'll fall back down or it's only so high up that you know gravity's going to take form and do whatever if the ledge is too high you can't get the grappling hook to go and hit right there right uh if it's too high it'll just hit the wall and come back down but if it's high enough you can either hit the very tippy top like that with the vertex or you can go super high above and it can grapple right there our idea of this is first of all you can see an initial height of five. That's because when you throw the grappling hook, it's about five feet in the air like that. So that's where the five comes from. You throw the grappling hook, hook and gravity come, takes into form. It, I'm technically, it would go straight up or whatever. That, that doesn't matter. Your initial velocity of your throw is apparently 32 feet per second. That's what's happening. And it's doing that. We're trying to find out, guys. We don't know how tall this ledge is. The most that we can get height-wise from a 32 feet per second throw five feet above the ground and on earth <laughs> from gravity is a height that's modeled here we'll calculate we'll get we'll see a parabolic arc when it comes to a graph but it reaches a maximum height we want to know what the vertex of that parabola is right here starting at five and going right here what is the maximum height of the parabola they're not asking for time so to speak if that makes sense, guys, they're not asking for what time it would hit. We don't even know if it would hit the ledge or whatever else. We just want to know what is the maximum height of the grappling hook. I don't care what the X is. I care what the Y is. We might need to use the X to get the Y, but I need to know if this number is 20 or more. Because if it's not 20 or more, we are not going to be able to throw it high enough to reach the ledge. If this number is 20 or more, we will have reached the ledge. Okay? So this is what we're doing on the problem. We are calculating the vertex, specifically trying to get the y value of the vertex. And if, once more, once more, if the y value of the vertex is 20 or more, then we have thrown it high enough to reach the ledge. There is a second way we can do the problem as well. I'll explain what it is in a moment, but let's first do this. Because they're asking what is the maximum height, you might as well do the vertex version of it. So here we go. For the vertex, we got to either start by using negative b over 2a and then plugging that value in. Negative b over 2a is going to be negative 32 over negative 32, which is 1. So when the t value is 1, at 1 second, your throw will reach its, will reach its maximum height. And then let's substitute 1 into there and figure out what that maximum height is going to be. Negative 16 times 1 squared plus 32 times 1 plus 5. That's going to be 1 squared is 1 times negative 16 is negative 16 plus 32 plus 5. That's going to be 16 plus 5, which is 21, 21 feet. So your maximum height, this question here, your maximum height is 21 feet for the grappling hook. Can you throw the grappling hook high enough to reach the 20-foot ledge? Yes. Now remember, you started by throwing it five feet in the air. So if you threw it from ground level at 32 feet per second, you probably only reach 16 feet of a maximum height. Thank goodness you're tall enough to throw it from five feet in the air to reach it. And because that's what the model's talking about. So yes, yes, you can. Yes. To the answer to that question. Now, what are other ways we can do this? We can also obviously have gotten this in vertex form and figured out what the vertex was from that. So. If instead I did the neg uh, uh, completed the square, I would do h of t equals. I'd factor the negative 16 out from the first two terms. You get t squared minus 2t. That's that's what you factor negative 16 out of 32. You get that. Let's complete that square right there, and then the plus 5 is outside here, and you'll subtract negative 16 times that same number right here. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. Squared is 1, so a 1 goes here and a 1 goes here. And this would have been negative 16 times t minus 1 quantity squared. And then five, uh, negative six, opposite of negative 16 is 16 times 1 is 16. 5 plus 16 is 21. 
So this would have been vertex form, and this would have shown the time of one second irrelevant to us, the K value of 21, of course, being the important part that is pointing to the same thing there. That's still the answer. Yes, of course. Another way you could do this, although it would not answer the maximum height question, another way you could do this is just find out, you know how we did the, uh, the rocket that was 112 feet above the ground? We can do the same idea here with this. We can say, uh, here's, here's the graph to make sense of it. We could say, okay, the initial height of five right here, we throw it, it hits the top, it comes back down. I want to know whether 20 feet is a part of, you know, whether it intersects with the parabolic arc or not. Is 20 right here or is 20 too high up that it never hits the graph? You know, is it up here that it, it just never reaches? Does it hit right at the vertex? Is it right below? Apparently it's right below it right there because the vertex is at 21. So it'd be kind of like this. And here's what you would do in this scenario. You could do the same thing as we did for the rocket one. Remember the toy rocket one? I said, you know, thankfully I could tell you, where is it? This one right here. I said, thankfully I could tell you that this does hit 112 feet. That means we're going to cross and get answers here. So what you could do is you could set your height equal to 20. You could set your height equal to 20 in this equation. You can say 20 equals... 20 equals negative 16 t squared plus 32, whoops, 2t plus 5. And you can do one of two things here. You can either outright solve for t, and it could tell you at what times it would hit. And I, I don't really, I'm not really a fan of solving for t there because times it's hitting is not what we care about. We care that it would probably hit it's on its way down, whatever else. They're not asking at what time it hits the ledge. We're asking can it hit the ledge. But the idea is if you get solutions for t, if you get real solutions for T, either one or two real solutions, then that means it would hit. How can you tell if you get real solutions? You can evaluate the discriminant. You can do B squared minus 4AC. And if B squared minus 4AC is a positive number or if it's zero, that means you have real solutions. And if you have real solutions, that means that it does hit like this. If you get a negative discriminant, that means it doesn't hit. That means your thing's above like that. So let me show you on this one here. Let's, uh, I'm gonna add the 16t squared over. I'm gonna subtract the 32t over. And I'm gonna subtract the five over. And let's try out b squared minus 4ac on this one here. Now, I want to re-remind you that this answers the question of can you throw it high enough. This would not have answered what the maximum height of the grappling hook is. So I don't really recommend it for this kind of question because it asks for maximum height. But I want to, I, I want to give you the overall encompassing thing of what these things do and what we can use with them and why they matter to us. So discriminant here would be b squared minus 4ac, which would be, I don't know, negative 32 squared. Actually, I think, I think that's 1,024. Hang on. I'm going to do this just on the side. You're not going to see it. Okay, 1,024. That's 1024 minus 16 times 15 is 240 times 4 is 960. So minus 960, which is 60. Four, I think doesn't matter the point is if we if it's positive I if if I did everything right it's a positive number a positive number tells you there are two real solutions to this thing which just means that on a graph this intersects at two spots which we kind of expected because this height is at 21 right so that means because it's positive once again that answer is yes if the discriminant is positive there are two real solutions so that means it hits if it was if the discriminant was zero there'd be one real solution that would mean that it hits perfectly it would get right on the vertex right there which means your thing just hits the ledge of the grappling thing and if it was negative that means it would have never hit it would have never intersected that would have been a no but it's a yes because it's a positive number okay that's that's probably not how you'd want to solve this though mostly just because the maximum height idea you they ask for maximum height we need to know that it was 21 feet all right, here we go. Number five, very similar kind of question. You are trying to dunk a basketball. You need to jump 2.5 feet in the air to dunk the ball. The height that your feet are above the ground is given by the function here. What is the maximum height your feet will be above the ground? Will you be able to dunk the basketball? So you don't need to know that a basketball hoop is 10 feet above the ground. Apparently, 
with your... <laughs> I'm going to draw this. Apparently with you jumping up in the air. Yeah! Right, here, here's you jumping up in the air. Yeah! You just need to go 2.5 feet above the ground. Two and a half feet right here. Because apparently on a 10-foot hoop... Well, who knows? They don't know if it's a 10-foot hoop or not. But apparently on what could be a 10-foot hoop like that... Your you your height plus your wingspan looks like it needs to be probably about seven and a half feet total. Not that you need to know that information, but the idea is, guys, you plus your wingspan's the other seven and a half feet that I guess makes the ten feet. We just need to know: can our parabolic arc go? We hit two and a half feet at the very least. Hit two and a half feet as we come back down afterward, right? As we come back down to Earth, curse splat, and jump. Now apparently we jump twelve feet per second up vertically in the air. That's cool. Um, now we need to jump two and a half feet in the air to dunk the ball. And of course we're on earth. So there's the gravity stuff. So the same thing as before guys, we are going to, um, they, they do ask what the maximum height your feet will be above the ground. So we need to take this here and we need to find the vertex. Now I'm not going to do this by completing the square because factoring a negative 16 out of 12 means a fraction. Not that I can't do that, but it's not as compelling. I would prefer not to if I don't have to. So let's go ahead and find it by using negative B over two a. The t value the, of the vertex, that part we need first, is negative b. Now, there are fractions here regardless, but just the completing the square one, dividing a fraction by 2 and squaring is not fun. Negative b over 2a is negative 12 over negative 32. Now, that reduces, we can divide those by 4, and that's positive 3 eighths. 3 eighths, now that decimal is 0.375. You can bet, though. As I only care about the y value of this thing, I'm going to be calculating using this. I'm going to go without um, a calculator if, if, if I can. If you want to use a calculator, you can plug in either thing. But let's do h of h of 3 eighths, h of 0.375, what have you. So basically, you're in the air for 3 eighths of a second. Jason can get half a second jump. You can only get 3 eighths of a second jump uh, vertical. You're not jumping as high as Jason, but you probably survived this jump. This fall, I should say. Uh, okay, so what is this? Negative 16 times 3 eighths squared plus 12 times 3 eighths. Okay, so what is what is all this? This is negative 16 times 3 eighths quantity squared is 9 64ths. And then we can, we can start the reduction process here and then I'll show you how to do it on this one. You could do 12 times 3 divided by 8, but you could also do 12 divided by 8 to get 3 halves. You're like, I'm going to use a calculator. And I get 9 halves right there, which is fun. Negative 16 divided by 64 reduces to negative 1 fourth. So this is negative 9 fourths. So this becomes negative 9 fourths plus 9 halves. And if you know me, and if you watched any of my other videos, guys, then you know that when you add the first term with the second term after plugging in the vertex in a standard form equation, the answer is the opposite of the first term. You know what negative fourths plus 9 halves is? 9 fourths, positive 9 fourths. Now that is the y value of the vertex. As a decimal, as what might be important for us right here, this is 2.25 feet. So your maximum height, you, you're in the air for 0.375 seconds, which is great, but your maximum height to answer that question is 2.25 feet. Now to answer the question, will you be, will you be able to dunk the basketball? You needed your feet to get 2.5 feet in the air because apparently seven half foot wingspan, but you only go two and a quarter feet, not two and a half feet. Will you be able to dunk the basketball? No. You don't get high enough in the air there. You don't get high enough in the air. Now, I'm not going to complete the square to get vertex form, but I do want to show you the equivalent of the other thing where, although I won't get the maximum height of it, I'll show you what happens when you evaluate the discriminant by substituting two and a half in for H. I'm kind of like weird on room here, but I'll use a different color. So set that two and a half there, I got negative 16 t squared plus 12 t. And notice that this is kind of a plus zero because we jump off the ground. It's not like we're jumping off a ledge or anything like that. So that's a plus zero there. But I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna add the 16 t squared over. I'm going to uh, subtract the 12 t over and I got the plus 2.5 equals zero. And you know what, if you're me, I don't like using quadratic form with decimals here, even if decimals were an answer for something, even though this is discriminant. Uh, normally what I would do is I would make sure that everything's a whole number. 
Um, you can choose to do that or not. If, you, if you'd like to play that game with me, we could actually double everything. I'm going to leave them like this. We could use the calculator if, if we have to. Uh, okay, so here we go. Discriminant for that one would have been b squared minus 4ac. Oh, you know what? 2.5 is kind of nice here because 12 squared is 144. Because right here, 4 times 2.5 is actually 10. And 16 times 10 is 160. So this becomes 144 minus 160, which is negative 16. What does this tell you? A negative discriminant means that the parabolic arc cannot reach that height of 2.5 right there. They never intersect with each other. If they don't intersect with each other, that's a no solution case, no real solution. So that's another example of saying no, that doesn't answer what the height was. But that's just me giving you, again, an example of why no real solution kind of exists there. There is no time that you ever reach two and a half feet. Okay. All right. One more problem here. It looks like we're kind of reach, going to reach the hour mark on this one as well. My voice didn't actually feel as bad as it kind of did earlier. All right. A diver is standing on a platform 24 feet above the pool. He jumps from the platform with an initial upward velocity of 8 feet per second. Use this formula here where H is his height above the water at any time. T is the time. V is his starting upward velocity and S is his starting height. So we're going to substitute 24 in for S and 8 for V. So H of T equals negative 16 T squared plus 8 T plus the S is what? 24? plus 24 there. So this is our model for the diver's height. And again, as a graph sake thing right here, he's starting 24 feet above the water. The, the water is right here, guys. This is the pool in blue. It's kind of it's kind of the same thing as a Jason problem here. Only his dive, he's going to be doing this. He's going to hit some maximum height and come back down. And let's see what the question asks us. Does it ask about the vertex or what? How long will it take for him to hit the water? So we're trying to find this one right here. Remember, there will be another t value that we get that we can completely ignore. So let's go ahead and solve this thing. Hitting the water means h of t equals 0. We want to find the height when the height is 0 here. So we're going to do negative 16 t squared plus 8 t plus 24 equals 0. And let's solve. Now, this is, again, another problem I'm going to choose to not solve by completing the square because if I factor a negative 16 out, I'm going to be left with a fraction there, and I don't want that. But I am going to pull out a common factor here. I can divide everything by negative 8. I can divide everything by negative 8, and that's definitely going to shrink my stuff up. That's good. So I get a positive 2t squared. I get a minus 1t, and I get a minus 3 equals 0. Now, I don't know if this is factorable or not. Uh, well, actually, it is. This, this is factorable, so I can solve this by factoring. If you didn't know what was factorable, then I'll also solve using quadratic formula, just to kind of give you another quadratic formula insight here. So solving by factoring here, this is some 2t times t. One of these is a plus and minus, not quite sure which. This is either 3 and 1 or 1 and 3. If I plug 3 into here, I get 2 times 3, which is 6. Not really going to get that. So let's try 3 here and 1 here. So here, this will be negative 2 plus 3. That's positive 1. I need a negative 1. So the numbers are in the right spot, but i got to switch these signs to a minus and a plus. That's Anyway, I, I kind of saw the answer in my head before that, but that's how I could process that. So this is 2 minus 3, which is negative 1. So we got it. So this is the factorization right there. So either 2t minus 3 equals 0 or t plus 1 equals 0. If 2t minus 3 equals 0, we add 3 to both sides, and we divide both sides by 2, we get t equals 3 halves. Or we subtract 1, we get t equals negative 1. Now here's an example of, here is the 3 halves value, and here is the negative 1 value. Negative 1 will be omitted for the time that was before he jumped, a second before he jumped, and of course he didn't ascend to the diving board, and he didn't hit the water at that time. But the 3 halves is, now 3 halves is 1.5. T is three halves. That's one and a half seconds. So it took him one and a half seconds to hit the water from his dive. Looks like he didn't go very high up, or he's not very high up in order for that to happen. They didn't ask for maximum height, but if they did, you know, negative b over two a works something like that. I probably won't do completing the square on that one. Let's go ahead and solve this using quadratic formula though as well. I'm gonna give you that, and then I'm all done with this video. So as far as quadratic formula goes, we take standard form, and I happily shrunk this thing for standard form to do quadratic. I'm not going to use big numbers if I don't have to. And I got my a value positive, which is something I appreciate. 
So a is two, b is negative one, c is negative three. So in quadratic formula here, discriminant would have been b squared minus four ac, which is one minus negative is plus, four times two is eight times three is 24, and which is 25. If you were using quadratic formula and you got a uh, perfect square discriminant, that would tell you that this is factorable. So you could go to factoring after that if you'd like to, if you didn't want to bother testing it beforehand. So quadratic formula, t equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So that is going to be positive 1 plus or minus 5 all divided by 4. Now as you recall guys, 1 minus 5 would give us our negative solution. So we're going to just focus on 1 plus 5. So 1 plus 5 divided by 4 is 6 over 4, which is 3 over 2. And of course, we get that same answer as we got up there before. 3 over 2, which is 1 and a half seconds. And that is our final, final answer of this whole thing. So as you saw, guys, although we weren't really graphing, you know, the graphs really did help signify what it is we were doing for the rest of the problems. They really helped explain things away. And I think giving yourself a visual is important for that. Not only that, but uh, understanding as these are using gravity and stuff, upside down parabola says we are talking about maximum height here and we can make sense when something is versus it's not a solution or what it means to actually reach something or not reach something there. A lot of things involved and it really took us knowing how to factor, use quadratic formula, completing the square, but also what else? Understand intercepts and also a possible halfway in between our intercepts like we talked about for this problem right here. Uh, understood some things about negative b over 2a. You know, all that stuff was involved. So combining everything together to get into word problems is a nice go for this. And you can always solve by graphing um, or solve a graph by algebraic methods the way that we did here as well. All right, guys, so that ought to do it for this one. I got underneath the hour mark there. I'm glad that I did. This is Mr. Robinson. Thank you so much for watching. Remind me to get this PDF up here because uh, I'll forget by the time this thing uploads. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Take care, and I will see you in the next one.